Hello, my name is Dan Watkins, and I'm here uh, as part of the Creative 82 uh, program to teach a little class on soap carving. So we're going to carve an owl. And this has been presented by the Hickman County Arts and Crafts Guild. So I guess we'll start. You should have a package. If you got one of the packages, it will have in it a marker, some sandpaper for sharpening your knife, a little knife made out of a popsicle stick, and there should be a measuring stick in there as well. This is what we're going to do our layout marks on our owl so that we know where to cut to and, and, and where to stop. And you should have a square bar of soap. This is just plain ivory soap. Uh, I use ivory because it's less expensive and it's nice and smooth white. So you can use any soap. What we need to do to start off is we need to do our layout on our on our soap. What we want to do is lay out the different sections of the owl on the carving. So we want the stand at the bottom, the owl's body, and the head and everything separated. So that's what these little marks are on here for. I've, I've set them up for you so you don't have to do a bunch of measuring with a ruler or anything. So if you'll just take your popsicle stick and your marker and your bar of soap, and at each corner where it says it on the popsicle stick here, it's got the word top. Put that mark at the top of your bar of soap. Also to select the top of your bar of soap, find the, the, the best end. Notice this one is curved and this one here is nice and flat. Whichever is the best end. And you'll lay that mark that, at the top, at the top of your soap. And very gently with your marker, do not press down hard with your marker because if you do, it will get soap built up on it and uh, it, it won't want to write then. So you can clean it with a paper towel. But just at each of these marks, put a hash mark. You'll notice that two of the lines go all the way across the popsicle stick. This one here in the middle and the one down there. We want that those lines to go all the way around the uh, block of soap. So we'll measure those. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a light line so that you can know where to cut to. And then again go all the way across. Let's see I've got some built up on my marker. And then once again at this corner. marker is refusing to write well for you, you can just uh, make a little scratch in your soap. Last, the last 
side and we'll mark across it. You need to use a straight edge to make that mark. If you feel more comfortable doing that, just lay your popsicle stick on there. Cross from your hash marks and then just drag your pen across. Once you have your owl all laid out, like this one is here, then we'll be ready to make our first cut. So we can set the measure and stick aside and we'll pick up our knife. The knives, like I said, are made out of popsicle sticks. They are reinforced on the edge a little bit with some super glue. And you can, if they start to roll, if your soap is starting to dry out a little bit, it'll be more brittle and it may dull the edge some. If it does dull the edge, you can just sand it like you would sharpen a knife on a stone and that will bring the edge back so you can do more carving. The first cut we want to make, is like the one here on number one, it's just going to take the corner of all this off here and that's going to define the owl's face. So the first thing we want to do is, is carve his face in. And to do that we're going to come down to the second line, the second line down on our hatch marks on one of the corners. It doesn't matter which corner. Um, you might try to pick the one that's got the best form to it, but it really doesn't matter which corner you start at. Something you could do also, just draw a line from the top corner down to that hash mark on both sides of his face here. It's only if you feel the need to. But that's what you're going to take off. It's everything inside that little triangle there. You want to remove that because that is not part of the owl. So what we're going to do is take away everything that's not owl. When you're doing these cuts, take small cuts, start at the corner. Don't try to go deep with your cuts. If you, if you try to go deep with your cuts, the soap is going to break away and you really can't do much for it after it's broken. You can try to super glue it back together, but more than likely you just have to get another piece of soap. So we just want to remove that corner, just like I am here. I'm trying to hold this where you can see it. Camera lady might can tell me if you can see it. <laughs> and all you want to do is make that a flat surface down to that hash mark, to approximately to the center of the of the bar going across. So when you finish that cut, it should look like this one here. You might be able to see it better in this one down here with the darker marks. You just want to take that angle off. Then we want to define the back of the owl's head. So we will turn our block over where we can see the back of the head and we'll come again down to that second hash mark and do the same thing. Start at the top corner, making small cuts. What I didn't mention, you will need to put something under under your carving. Um, you don't want to carve directly with soap directly on your tabletop and everything. When you go to wipe it up, it's going to make a lot of bubbles. <laughs> so, if you piece of newspaper or or a paper bag, or in this case got a little table cover at Dollar Tree. It works pretty good. But you want to catch all your soap. If you're really crafty, you can reconstitute this soap 
and pour it into a pan and uh, make you some more bars of soap. So all of your shavings that you pull off there don't have to be wasted. You can make another bar for another carbon. Okay, so when you finish that side, the top of your owl should look like this. It's got a, about a 45 degree angle on the front and the back. And that's number two here. Let me show you that. The next cut you're going to want to make, well, number three here, it shows us in between the ears. We want to define the top of the head and make the, the owl's ears that stand up on the corner. So in order to do that, we're just going to make a sweeping cut, a little at a time, from one side to the other. So we just, it's just kind of a scooping cut in there. Take it from one side to the other, where it leaves about an eighth of an inch or a little more on each side untouched. That will be the ears that stand up on the owl. Okay? And that's number three here. Then the fourth stage we want to go to is we want to separate the head from the body so, so that we can define the head. So what we'll do is, on that mark that goes all the way around, the reason for it going all the way around is so that we can cut us a groove on all four sides of the carving to separate the head of the owl from the body of the owl. So our next cut, this can be done a couple of different ways. You can start with the tip of your knife right here and cut a small cut, what we call a stop cut, down the center of that line that goes around the, the owl's body here. Cut it in a sixteenth of an inch or so, all the way around. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, that'll give us a stop cut. Then we can come in on an angle and make a cut in about a 45 degree angle on each side of our stop cut. Another way that you can make this same indention or cut is to take the point of your blade here and just scrape it sideways through there gently. Don't, don't try to make big cuts. Take your time to do gentle cuts. Shallow little chips come off. So you can make that cut either of those ways. I generally prefer to just make the 45 degree angle cuts like that. And then it's done. Then your head is defined, separated from the body. You can take that a little deeper if you, if you need to, if you feel the need to. But don't go so deep as to break the head off of the body. Okay, now his head is defined, separated from the body. The 
becomes number four. Our next step, our fifth step, is we're going to define the, the beak of the owl. We're going, to, we're going to make it. What we're going to do in order to define the beak is we're going to undercut the front of the face on the chest here at this mark. That's the second mark down. It's where we'll cut to. So what we'll do is on the front of your owl, we need another one of those stop cuts we was talking about. And what a stop cut is, is it's a little cut that you make so that when you're cutting to towards it and your blade hits that, it'll come to a stop. It'll give you a little detent position, I guess. And you can feel it when it hits that spot and you know to stop pushing then. So just gently cut that corner down to that second bar. Go a little lower if you want. Bring it in there on about a 45 degree angle. <clears throat> it's a very common angle on, on chip carving and, and caricature carving is a 45 degree angle. And that will define the beak. It will bring that beak out. Dress it up a little bit. And now to make the beak beak shaped, what you're going to need to do is take the tip of your blade, just the end of it, just enough that it'll fit through from one side to the other of the block. Start at the outside edge. I'm trying to turn this where you can see the cut being made. But start here at the outside edge and just make a little scooping cut out of there. that will define the beak. We'll just give it a hook shape like a curved beak of a predatory bird. You see how it is. Okay, now that we've got that one, we want to continue the carving by defining the head a little more. So like we have here in this one, you see that we've, we're shaping the head down to the actual shape of the head. We're going to take some off of the back, and we're going to take some off of each side at the bottom, and we're going to take some off at the ears. Now when we start at the ears up here, be very, very careful. Uh, the soap is kind of delicate, and if you try to make a large cut here or do this all in one cut, you're going to break this ear off and then you can fix it. You'll have to shave the top of the owl's head off and start over and just make, him, make his head a little smaller. But uh, if you're gentle and don't try to make too big a cut, then uh, it should, should work out fine for you. So what we'll do is we're going to go in at this top mark, the very top one here. And we're going to go in and make a stop cut by going straight into that. Maybe a, a sixteenth of an inch into the soap. And then we're going to come up to the top of our ear or just below the top of our ear. And we're going to cut into that stop cut. Make small cuts. Don't try to take it all in one piece. that will define that ear on that side. Then we'll come in on the other side and do the same thing. Come in about a sixteenth of an inch with a stop cut. Then come to the top and carve into it. And now it's ears like get the front of it turned toward the ear. Now his ears are defined. Now what we want to do is define the sides of his head because he needs a little bit of a neck. So 
what we'll do is we'll come to this other mark here, the second mark, the second mark down, and we will start shading gently into our stock cut that was around his neck. We'll do that on both sides of his head. And on the back. Now when you do it in the back, you can just cut it straight down. But don't try to take it all in one cut or it'll break away and you can take a big chunk out and it'll be difficult to fix. So shave it down, just nice thin shavings down to the stop cut. While you're back there on his head, if you want, you can take your blade and kind of round that sharp corner off of there. Make your head kind of rounded on the back side. And now you have his head defined. The other last feature that you need on the head, well, there's actually a couple more features you need, but the last flat plane that you need to cut onto his head is the place for his eyes set. You don't want his eyes to be right on the front of this flat piece and you don't want them to be off to the side. I have a couple of examples here. If you cut him right straight into the front, he looks like he's a little bit cross-eyed. So you don't want to do it right on the front. And if you just cut underneath, then he looks really, really evil. So if you want an evil looking owl, you can just cut his eyes underneath that flat plane. But it's better if you'll take that corner off. And uh, I'll show you here on this one. His eyes look a little bit better. He's more of an approachable owl. He's still menacing, but a little more friendly. So in order to make that facet for his eyes to set on, Come down here to the front of his beak on this corner that's running here, this sharp corner, and you're going to just shave it off flat right up to his ear. You can put a little bit of a dip in it if you want. And you'll do that on both sides. There's the first side. second side and now we have a place to set his eyes we'll have some more detailing and everything that we'll do to his face here shortly but uh, so we're going to move to the body but we will be coming back to his head to, to put his eyes in to do a little more shaping on his feet and the sides of his head and everything. So now we need to move to the body. And when we start shaping the body, I guess this one is it. We're going to give it a similar shape that we did to the head. We're going to take the corners off. It's just because he's not blocky. We want him to be to have some form and some roundness to him. So you come over here to this first line coming down to it here. This first line on the on the body area right here, and you'll shave up to the stop cut that we went around here neck with and just take his around his or shape his coin his short the excuse me <laughs> I'll spit those words out in a minute. But shape the corner of his shoulders down a little bit.
and he should look something like that. Now we need to shape the bottom of the body. So before we do that, we want to do the same thing with a stop cut all the way around the bottom here. That's going to give us a base for the owl to stand on and a place for us to, to carve his little toes where he's hanging onto his pedestal. So just like we did around the neck, we'll come around this bottom mark down here. Come around that mark and cut us a stop cut in there. About a sixteenth or maybe a little more deep. Doesn't have to be perfect. But don't try to go too deep because then it may want to break the corners away. And if you do damage your carving, you can, you can repair them. The soap can be glued with super glue, just like wood can be. It actually holds it pretty good. This little gentleman here, he got decapitated and I glued his head back on the, the super glue. So once you get your stop cuts all the way around the base, then you can come in on the 45 degree angle and notch that out. Or you can do like we talked about before and just drag that knife tip through there sideways to scrape it out to whatever depth you feel that you need there. About a sixteenth or just over a sixteenth of an inch is cleaning. Okay, once you get that groove cut all the way around the base, then you want to shape his back and sides and his chest. So we'll start with his chest here. And what we're going to do to shape it is we're going to come right up here to the corner, the point where we shape the top of his chest into his beak. We're going to start there and just shape down on an angle into that stop cut down there. That'll give him a little bit of a belly. Now right at the top here, it's a little bit sharp. You're going to want to round that a little bit. You can do that by just scraping it gently with the blade, or you can make a sweeping cut over the top of that corner. Just a little shaving, so you want to pull a little shavings. Haste makes waste. If you get in too big a hurry, you're going to you're going to damage your car. So once you get the chest defined, the belly defined, then come to the side. We're going to cut into the sides and define his wing. What we want to do there is we're going to make a sweeping cut into the side, a little at a time, until we get it cut out to where we want it. As you can see here on this carving, we want it to be tapered out, kind of a curve. So we'll just start right up here where we cut our shoulder. And we'll make a sweeping cut a little at a time until we get it to the depth we want. Cut it a little deeper toward the bottom than you do at the top. That'll give him some taper to his body. Just cut it down to the stop cut. Turn it all around to the other side 
and do the same thing. Take a look at him from the front and make sure you got him balanced. Notice I've got this side deeper than this one, so I need to come back and take some more off of this side. They don't have to be perfect, but try to balance him as well as you can. This one right here is not, definitely not perfect, but he's leaning a little bit on the tree limb, I guess. Okay, now that you've got his basic body shaped, oh, you need to do the back. I didn't do the back yet. When you're doing the back, come down to this second line, the second one down from where his neck cut was at. Let's see if we can find that one here. On the back, the second line from this, from the stock cut around his neck second line down and come up to the stop cut on his neck on that 45 degree angle once again and you want it to cut in just a little deeper than the back of his head should look something like that. Paper in there. And then you'll come to the point of that cut down to the back of the base. This is a slight angle in. You'll cut deeper at the bottom than you will at the top. And define his back. Taking it off about like that. Almost an eighth of an inch in go all the way to an eighth of an inch if you wish. That way he's just not a snowman, he's an owl. You can make a snowman if you want to. But that's the way the back should be defined right there. Now on the front of the carving, now we're, it's time to get into some details now do some, some of the finer details. We want to uh, have a place for his toes to sit, just to show his toes. So I'm going to cut his belly in a little deeper here, just because of the way this is tapered at the bottom. When I cut my angle on here, like you see on this one, it's going to make it a little short. So in order to have room for him to, to have some toes on there, I'm going to make him a little skinnier. He was a little too fat anyway, he needed to go on a diet. So put him on a diet, take that belly in a little further. Like that. And then we want to take this corner off here. Just the top of it. We want to taper this base down. So the easiest way to do that is to start here at the bottom and cut toward the owl on a slight angle. Give us a little space down here, a little more than an eighth of an inch to carve his toes. His toes are real simple to carve. Uh, all you do is start in the middle of your owl, and the tip of your blade, and cut a groove down to the corner of the base. Then you'll move to one side, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or a little less, and cut another groove. Go to the other side, cut another groove. And then on the outside of those outside grooves, cut one more on each side. Then if we clean off our fuzzies, Gently just 
spray them off. My bar soaked a little bit soft and I just broke his toes off. If you break his toes off, just come back in and gently scratch them in again. Resist the urge to blow on your carbon like I was just about to do then because your chips will go flying everywhere. Okay, and there's his toes. You can see them also on this one here. Okay, so he's got toes. Now he needs some eyes, right? So what we're going to do for this owl, we're going to define his beak a little bit, make it a little more shapely. So this top corner of his beak, where it's kind of a hard, sharp corner, we don't want that on there. We're going to round it off a little bit. You can do that by shaving it with a sweeping cut around the corner, or you can just lay the side of your knife on there, the edge of your knife on there, and just scrape it gently. Don't press hard. until we round the beak off. We want to round it off up to the sockets we cut for his eyes. And that will give it a more of a beak appearance. It's a little more rounded. Now to cut his eyes, you want to come up just above where the top of his beak is, or about about level with the top of his beak, where his forehead is at right there. Come over to the center of that flat spot that we cut for his eyes, this flat, flat spot here, and just with your knife blade, See if I can show you here and do it. With your knife blade held like that, just go in straight into the owl and then lift that chip out. Straight in, lift the chip out. And then come to the other side. Try to make sure that you're, I don't Pretty close to the level, I think, there. Make sure you're level if you can so his eyes aren't crooked on his head. And again, push in and lift the chip out. Push it in and lift the chip out. And that should give you your eye definition. You can make that eye as deep as you wish, but you just basically want to get it deep enough that it throws a shadow, and the shadow then will make it appear to be an eye. Now what we need to do is we need to smooth some edges to finish our owl up. We want to get rid of all of these black marks also, all these black marks that you see on here. They need to go away. So just gently shade those away with the edge of your knife, either with gentle little cuts, or you can just scrape it. Use your knife blade like a scraper. Take all the sharp corners off, but just barely scrape them off. Little tiny soap chips should come off of there. Just remove all your black marks. Everywhere there's a black mark, scrape it away. You don't need him, don't need any of the black marks anymore. Or some of you had other color pins in your bags. So they have pink or orange or red marks. <laughs> Just gently scrape the corners smooth. 
around it. Same thing on his belly. a little more debonair or a tuxedo instead of boxes. Now an owl's got to have some feathers, right? So we've got everything else to find. We've got his ears, we've got his eyes, but he needs some feathers. So a good place to put those feathers would be on the outer portion of his wings here. So. The way we're going to do it is just a, a simple push into the carving with the point of our knife. If you're working with wood and carving with you know a carving knife on wood doing this carving, when you push in, you'll leave the chips. And what the chips will do is they'll stand up, kind of prowl away from the body a little bit, and it'll look like feathers hanging there on the on the owl's wings. On the bar of soap, they're generally not going to stay in place very well, so we're just going to remove them and let the shadows in the indentations that we leave create the effect of, wing, of feathers on its wings. So we'll just start here at the top, and we're going to make several rows down each side, down each wing. So we'll start at the top here, come down about an eighth of an inch, and push in gently. And push in about a sixteenth of an inch, and lift the chip out. see those in the video I hope. Then come underneath with another row. It gets narrower so you can't go quite as wide. We're going to put two there. And down below that we'll put one more row in with two in it. So that gives us some feathers on that wing. We'll come across to the other side and do the same thing. Poke it in there, about a sixteenth of an inch, and lift straight up. Poke it in, sixteenth, and lift straight up. And then you can take your blade and gently scrape the chips away. And ladies and gentlemen, you have carved an ivory soap owl. Thank you for your time here. Listen, I hope you enjoyed it. There's lots of different things you can carve with soap. Uh, it's a good medium for carving. You can use, like we did here today, popsicle stick knives, or you can use regular carving knives. You can even use a paring knife out of your kitchen. Uh, you can carve all sorts of forms, squirrels, deer, um, bears, in fact, to carve a bear, you use the same form that you use here for the owl. Uh, you use the same cuts. The only difference is in his nose, you leave it blocky and round. And then this owl would become a bear. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you continue to enjoy it through the years. And I want to say that this workshop has been provided to the by the Hickman County Arts and Crafts Guild. 
along with the Grinder Switch Foundation, and it's funded in part by a generous arts access grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission and the Tennessee State Legislature. We want to thank them for that. Thank you.